this is a light pink. Hi. <laughs> Go back to be live. Go back to be Hi, and welcome to our live webinar broadcast. I'm Kathleen Taylor with the Nevada Women's Business Center. This webinar is Taxation for Small Businesses. And it is my pleasure to uh, have a special guest here to present to you about taxes for small businesses. So if you are starting a business or you have an existing business, this topic is definitely for you. The webinar is from 5 p.m. until 6.30 p.m. It is live streaming on our very own Nevada Women's Business Center YouTube channel. Also, a couple things. We do have a live chat feature. So if you are, are uh, if you are on our YouTube channel, if you look at the, the right bottom side of the page, you will see a live chat feature. And you can just write your questions and your comments and send them to us and we'll make sure to, uh, to answer them accordingly. So I'd like to, first of all, introduce to you Mr. Dino Brown of the Las Vegas Urban League. And he is a partner and he is so gracious in hosting us today. And I would like uh, for Dino to share some things with you about the Las Vegas Urban League. Thanks so much, Kathleen. Uh, again, my name is Dino Brown. I'm the executive director here at the Las Vegas Urban League. I head up two main programs, one called the Entrepreneurship Center, which is a place where individuals come to get business education, business training, and real-time consulting around how to start a business and also how to grow business and improve profitability. I also help the um, Financial Empowerment Center, which is all around providing financial literacy education to individuals. And, uh, and all the work we do at the Urban League is really aimed toward you know, eliminating poverty and helping individuals and families in low-income communities. Okay, excellent. And again, if you would like to uh, enhance your entrepreneur development skills, the, excuse me, the Nevada Women's Business Center and also the Las Vegas Urban League, we partner together to provide a variety of different trainings for startup and existing businesses. And also, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speaker today. And she is Ms. Laura Kelly from the Department of Taxation. And I'd like to share a couple things with you about Laura. Uh, Laura has been a State of Nevada employee for over 25 years. She has been with the Department of Taxation since 1996. So, so folks, you're in good hands you know, expert opinion here, absolutely. She was currently a tax program supervisor in the Las Vegas office and supervises the Las Vegas tax examiners, processors, and other front counter employees. This is definitely someone that you really want to connect with. Her primary focus is on business registration and taxpayer education. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you Ms. Laura Kelly of the Department of Taxation and uh, Laura, would you uh, like to share a couple things with the audience before we start? Well, I'm pleased to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I don't know. Oh, it's okay. Hey, it's a live broadcast, and it you know it's it's a great dynamic. We're really excited to launch this type of format, especially with you know great experts, great community partners. So with that, if you just bear with me, I'm going to switch over to Laura's slide presentation, mm -hmm. and she will begin to uh, share some really good information about uh, taxes and small businesses. So thank you. Okay, good evening everyone. Um, we're gonna spend a little bit of time tonight talking about um, new businesses 
um, and what the Department of Taxation's role is in getting your new business started. And as you're in business, the role the Department of Taxation will play um, while you're in business. So um, the class that we're gonna present tonight is our basic training. We call it Ask the Advisors. Uh, pardon us, folks. Yeah. So we're having oh, some technical some difficulties, difficulties uh, with the slide program. Okay. Well, one of the things that um, what every business, new business owner, or somebody who's thinking about being in business needs to know is that they're going to have to visit the Nevada Department of Taxation as part of the process of um, getting your business started. Most new business owners will go to um, local licensing and local licensing is going to give them a list of places that they need to visit in order to get their local business license. The Department of Taxation is going to be one of the businesses on or one of the places you'll need to visit. Um, the role that the Department of Taxation has is um, we are we administer um, I think approximately 20 different taxes in the state of Nevada. Um, so when you come to the Department of Taxation, you're going to complete a Nevada business registration form, as well as our supplemental information sheet. Um, you will sit down with a tax examiner um, in our office, and the tax examiner will interview you to determine whether or not you need to be registered for any of the taxes that our department administers. Oh, okay, it looks like we're... Okay, uh, pardon me, folks, um, <laughs> while I make sure that everything is okay here. Okay. Probably jumped ahead of my slide. Oh, no, you're, <laughs> you're, you're doing great. It's, uh, it's one of the glitches of a live broadcast. Mm -hmm. You may never know what could yeah. happen. <laughs> okay, here are the slides again. Okay. So... We're going to backtrack just a little bit. I got a little bit ahead as the slides were um, sleeping, it seemed like. So the Department of Taxation, um, our mission statement is to provide fair, efficient, and effective administration of tax programs for the state of Nevada in accordance with applicable statutes, regulations, and policies. We're here to serve the taxpayers, the state, and local government entities. So here, like I said a few moments ago, we're here today, I'm here today to explain to you a little bit about the registration process um, within the Department of Taxation. We're gonna discuss a few of our, um, our key taxes, the ones that affect most people. We're also gonna talk a little bit about um, payments and filing returns. Um, and we're gonna try as hard as we can to answer any questions that um, you folks might have. All right, so the Taxpayer Bill of Rights is in the NRS, in the Nevada Revised Statutes, Chapter 360, um, 291, is the, your rights as a taxpayer. You can get the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. They're available on our website. They're also provided to any business when they're audited. You can also request them from us, and we can um, print them up for you. So going back a few minutes, and we were talking a little bit about registration. So um, if you are... Um, Starting a new business, you're going to need to complete the Nevada business registration form as well as the supplemental form. Um, those are both required um, documents to register with our department. Um, even to get a clearance letter from our department, you will need to fill out the Nevada business registration form and the supplemental form. You're going to, at that time, sit down with a tax examiner if you visit one of our local offices. We currently have two offices here in Southern Nevada. We have the Henderson office, as well as the um, Las Vegas office. When you visit um, either one of our offices, you can sit down with a tax examiner, and the tax examiner can answer any questions you might have, as well as determining whether or not you need to be registered with us. If we determine that you need to register for a sales tax permit, there's a $15 charge for a sales tax permit per location of your business. If you're required to register as a consumer, there is no charge for a consumer permit. This is the Nevada business registration form. 
um, when you, um, you can get this off of our website. You can also pick this up in the office and complete it, complete it in either one of our offices while you're there. You're going to need to complete the entire application. If something does not apply to you, you want to make sure that you put non-applicable. Otherwise, you need to assume that the information is required and fill it out. It does need to be signed by an owner, officer, member, manager of the business. If um, one of those people is not available to sign the application, then the person presenting the application in the office does need to have a letter of authorization signed by an owner or um, officer, member, manager of the business. The supplemental information sheet is specific to our department only. This is a, basically a supplement to the Nevada Business Registration Form. So this is information that the department needs in addition to the Nevada Business um, Registration Form. Um, in particular, one thing you're going to notice on here is line five and six. If you are um, going to be retailing or selling any goods, line five and six are going to be important to you because you're going to need to estimate for us how much you think you're going to be selling per month, and out of that, how much is going to be taxable. Because if you are registering with the Department of Taxation for a sales tax permit, um, you're going to possibly be required to post a security deposit. So um, you want to pay close attention. And the tax examiners in the office, if you do visit one of the offices, can help you through that process. So. A security deposit is required for anybody who is required to have a sales tax permit unless your the calculated security is a thousand dollars or less so if you come into the office and you give us an estimate for how much you think you're going to be selling per month um, we're going to figure out how much sales tax you would collect off of that amount of money and we're going to multiply it by three and that's the amount of money that we're going to require in security from you if that amount of money is less, $1,000 or less, you're not required to post security. However, you have to keep in mind that the, um, the regulation allows for the department to reevaluate security after six months. So if you register with us and you, your estimate is lower than $1,000, or possibly you register online and your estimate is lower than $1,000, but if the department finds after six months of reporting that your um, sales are much higher and that you should have posted security, they can send out a demand for security. Okay, okay. Um, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, so there's, uh, it just seems that there's this like uh, mystique, so to speak, about the Department of uh, Taxation when you, when you uh, talk to someone about it, uh, a small business owner, there's like, oh no, the Department of Taxation. What is it that you can share with our listeners that that your agency is uh, is 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 more than uh, accessible to the community? Oh you know, with free resources and education and and also outreach as well. And you can talk about uh, your um, your seminars that okay. you provide too. Okay. The department. I mean, I am a longtime employee, as you said earlier. I've um, I've been um, a tax examiner. I've been a revenue officer. I've been a supervisor of revenue officers. I've pretty much worked my way through the department. Our department is very what I like to call user friendly. The people in the department. We try very hard to educate our taxpayers. That's really what we're there for. We do not want to, um, we never like to do, um, how would you say, strict enforcement, or it's not our desire to close a business down. We want to help you to be in business. That helps the state of Nevada if you're in business. So that's our goal to help you. The tax examiners in our office, um, they are extremely helpful. If you don't understand something or you've registered with us online and now you've gotten a notice in the mail and you don't understand, you can come into one of the local offices and sit down with a live person and have your questions answered. Oh, um, excellent. Yeah. And, and speaking of which, um, in reference to timing, I understand that, that there's a, a process for everything. So at what, at what point should a person reach out to you guys should it be uh initially uh immediately when 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 an issue of, of taxes is brought to the forefront or 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 i notice that people go into like reactionary mode or panic mode so so at, at what point should a person you know just contact you guys versus letting things fester well if a business 
a business should come to the Department of Taxation mm -hmm. before they start business, obviously. Yes. Um, if they've registered with us and they find that they're having problems either with not understanding what they're required to be collecting, let's just say, sales tax on, mm -hmm. then they should contact us as soon as possible to make sure that they do understand so that they don't find themselves in a situation where maybe they haven't collected sales tax when they should have or that they over collected sales tax. Okay, um, I think that as soon as you notice there's a problem, I, I don't think, um, would you say, hiding it, hiding your head in the sand is a good idea at all. Always reach out to the department. Excellent. Um, and Excellent. you were asking, you stated earlier about the classes. Yes, the department yes. offers monthly classes. It's the Ask the Advisor Seminar. It's a three-hour class that we offer. Um, it's January through October. It's um, the third Tuesday of every month we offer this class. Um, we have some guest speakers that come for the first hour, and then the department presents. We also have one of our audit staff presents and gives a little bit of a class about the um, audit process to take a lot of the fear out of the audit process. And you're absolutely right that people don't like the word taxation, and they automatically yep. assume the worst. But sales tax... There's a huge, huge negative yes. stigma associated with it. Yep. And just to build on Kathleen's question, many of the people that come in, walk into our, our building Kathleen and myself, and the SBA as well, um, they they have already started a business, right? And, you know, yes. I, I completely understand and appreciate what you're saying about being proactive and having the education to know to get with taxation beforehand, but many of them unfortunately don't. Yeah. So what kind of information can I give them other than what you're saying right here to say, hey, you know what, your business started, before you do anything else, go see yes. the Department of Taxation yeah. because you don't want to be on the on the reactive, yes. reactionary side, like yes. Kathleen was saying before. Well, and it's not just sales tax, and I don't know, I mean, it, further on in, in the um, in our PowerPoint, mm -hmm. we do talk about use tax as well, right. which affects so many businesses. Right. So obviously, if you're selling tangible items, you, you need to have a sales tax permit. Yes. Okay, yes. tangible items are subject to Nevada sales tax. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also the matter of use tax, which affects everybody's business. So if I'm in business and I have desks and chairs and computers and just everything that we have just in this room here, all of these things are taxable to the person that's in business. So if I buy them in a way that I didn't get to charge Nevada sales tax, I'm required to pay the use tax on those items. And that is something that affects a lot of people and a lot of people are very unaware of that. And that's one of the things that when it comes to an audit situation, that can cause, you know, Problems. grief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, Good. so. This is excellent. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, please enter your questions or comments in the live chat box, and we'd be more than happy to share that uh, with, with Laura. Okay, so we'll, so in the state of Nevada, we do have filing requirements. Um, if you have, um, if, you're, if your tax that you have to admit the department is $10,000 or more per month, you are required to pay it electronically. So those, that, that is a law in, in the state of Nevada. Um, and I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna talk a little bit about sales tax, okay? okay. So sales tax, as, as most, a lot of people aren't really aware, sales tax helps the state of Nevada a lot pays for our schools and our roads and lots of things that people don't think about. And I think a lot of times people right away think of sales tax as sort of income tax and they think that they're paying it out of their pocket. Whereas actually if you sell something, you're collecting the sales tax from your customer and you're holding it in trust for the, for the state of Nevada and you're required then to remit it. So I like to give the example of if I go to McDonald's and I buy a hamburger, well, that's prepared food and that's going to be subject to sales tax. So I can't walk out of McDonald's without paying the sales tax to, to McDonald's, right? And then McDonald's is required then to remit it to the Department of Taxation that goes into distribution to the cities and the counties, and then 2% of the sales tax goes to the general fund. And I think that's, I think, uh, that's a great point. I think that's something that's really not understood. Yes. You know, by, by many you know, people, especially in the retail industry. So if I have a food truck, for example, right, and I'm selling food, I need to build that tax into what I'm charging. I can't just charge $9 for, you know, for three ribs and, and, a, and a biscuit. Yeah. I need to build in what the sales tax is so I can hold it. Otherwise, what people think is that, oh, 
the, the state just coming after me and taking yeah. away. Well, no, you were supposed to collect you that money ahead of time. It. You have to build that into your pricing, and that's a lot of people don't understand. Yeah, and 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 in the, there's counties in Nevada, and they all have different co components of right. their sales tax. So there's different sales tax rate. Here in Clark County, our sales tax rate is 8.15 right now. As of um, April 1st, it's set, set to go up to 8.25 percent. So it is um, set to to rise. Okay. So we're going to get bad New York, what you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm from New York. Yeah. I thought right. So, California. Yeah, California. Yeah, California's yeah, right. California's rate is high, too. I'm sorry. So we, we, we talk a lot about statutes and regulations. I mean, the Department of Taxation is not private industry. We are a state agency, and everything that we do is based upon what the statutes and the regulations allow us to do. Okay, so there's no rule book that we go by. It's we look to the laws to tell us what we're supposed to do in certain situations. We also put out, there's certain publications that we put out that are on our website. Um, there's tax notes, they go out quarterly, and there are technical bulletins. And I've given you a couple of samples in the packet. There's a couple samples of technical bulletins that the department has put out. Um, I think in particular I gave one on delivery as well as one on use tax. Um, our viewers at home can go to the website, our website, and under publications, they can see all the different te technical bulletins that, that are there. There's also the link to our statutes and regulations and all the chapters that our department administers are right there. So you don't have to go to the law library. You can get that link to the statutes that our department uses and the regulations that we use. Okay, okay. excellent. And then we have lots and lots of um, fre frequently asked questions on our website. On our website, tons and tons. We also have PowerPoints that you can watch, and we have some YouTube videos that you can watch as well on um, on how to file a sales tax return, how to sign up for um, our online tax system, lots of different things like that. So our website is very nice. So sales tax, as we were talking about, is um, something that a retailer that would collect from their customers on the sale of something tangible. So something tangible is something that can be seen, weighed, measured, felt, my, sh my dress, your blouse, okay? okay? Prepared food, that's a big one. Automobiles, mm -hmm. not your home. A right. home is not subject to sales tax. A home is real property, okay? okay? How about a car? Yep, a car is a tangible item. Okay, and uh, it, a company car, that's definitely a tangible, tangible item that item. can be uh, so taxed. That, so that mm -hmm. would be something that you would buy from a retailer here. You'd pay about mm -hmm. a sales tax. If you purchased it outside the state of Nevada, the Department of Motor Vehicles acts as an agent for us, and they do collect Nevada sales tax. If they have questions, then they're going to send them to our office to figure it out, and we will collect the sales tax there. Okay? Very good. Okay. So some of the things that are taxable are gross receipts. So the gross receipts are your total sales, or anything that's considered part of the gross receipts is going to be subject to sales tax, unless it is specifically exempted in the law. So you should always assume that everything's taxable unless mm -hmm. there's an exemption for it. Okay, if okay. it's tangible, you assume it's taxable yep. unless there's specifically an exemption. Okay, um, delivery charges can be taxable, but they might not be. So there's some some if ifs on those, and we'll talk a little bit later about those. Okay, okay. Um, I, I have a question for you, and uh, uh, come tax time, it's a uh, small businesses or business in general, deduction, 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 deduction. Um, how do you, could, could you advise uh, our audience on how important it is to make sure that you have all of your business deductions in order? And I understand you're not an accountant or yeah. on that side of things, it, but, but just generally speaking, it, it would definitely benefit the person. You have everything together. Well, I think a lot of taxpayers get confused when they think that we have a state income tax in Nevada. We do not. Right. We do have commerce tax that came out of our 2015 legislative session. Um, it is not a income tax. It is a gross, a, rep, a tax on gross revenue. Okay. Um, so sales tax, that's not an income tax. So when it comes to annual filing and deductions, that wouldn't apply in the case of sales tax. Very good, yes, so that's an important distinction. It is, a lot of people are very confused and they think that the IRS and the Department of Taxation are one and the same, and it's two right. different things. So um, you still have to deal with the Internal Revenue Service, and you can go to what, irs.gov, there's lots of information there, um, but our department is gonna be any state taxes, not federal, and we do not currently have a state income tax in Nevada, however, the commerce tax was created 
in the last legislative session. Okay, excellent information. And again, if you have any questions or comments uh, online, then please submit them. Okay, so. Is that, just a quick question, is that gonna, is that gonna remain the same in light of the new people in power, if you will, in, uh, in, in state government? Do you anticipate that to stay the same or will that change going forward? I don't have any information okay. like that. I'm a lowly man on the totem pole. <laughs> no, well, I'm, not saying, that. I'm a worker bee, Understood. you know? Understood. So yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm um, very affluent in what we do have currently. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so um, one of the things that you had mentioned earlier that I wanted to make sure I cleared up is you were talking there, we were talking about McDonald's and you were saying how people need to make, or food truck. Right. And you were saying that people need to be sure that they think about the amount of their tax and they include that in their price. Right. One thing that you never want to do on the sale of an item is include the sales tax in the price of the item unless you have a sign posted at your place of business stating that sales tax is included in okay. the price. Okay. A lot of times, like food trucks might do that. It makes it easier if you're at a carnival or mm -hmm. someplace where there's a food truck, it's easier for them to have a sign up that says, you know, $5 and mm -hmm. then it should be another sign that says sales tax is included in the price. There has to be that disclaimer there, okay? okay. So, um, and then they have to make sure that when they come to us that they say, I include the sales tax in the price, mm -hmm. and they need to make sure that they're telling us that if they want us to help them so we can back the tax out. Because otherwise, then they are taxing themselves out of their own pocket right. on top of the tax that they've collected. So um, that's something that's really important that okay. people realize. Um, Thanks for clarification. Yeah. Um, so this is just um, something that your your um, your users can refer back to. It, it shows them how to back the sales tax out. If they're in the type of business that they do want to include sales tax in the price, a lot of bars do that. Mm -hmm. They'll have and you'll see it on the receipt. Yep. It'll say sales tax included in the price, or it'll be on the cash register. It'll say that as well. Um, or maybe if you go somewhere like a um, a swap meet. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to want to say plus sales tax, uh -huh. right? So $10 for these sunglasses, right? right? Well, then I would have a sign posted saying that sales tax is included in the price. Okay. So then I can back that sales tax out right. and give it, report it to the department at the end of the month or end of the quarter, however they register. Okay. This is fantastic. I'm so glad that, um, that our agencies are collaborating to bring this type of information to, to the community. Uh, I'm learning a lot. Um, I was, you know, I am somewhat familiar with the whole uh, taxation, um, uh, you know, uh, ins and outs, but it's always good to, to learn something new, and you definitely have clarified a lot of things for me, thank so you. it's such a delight to have okay, you. Okay, thank you. So, another thing that's confusing to a lot of people is fabrication labor. They, they, they don't realize that labor to create something is taxable. So um, if I brought some wood to you mm -hmm. and you were a cabinet maker mm -hmm. and you created a cabinet for me, the labor you charge me is going to be subject to Nevada sales tax because it's fabrication labor. You created something. And I think that that is something that people don't realize. They really don't. No, but repair labor, as long as it's separately stated on an invoice, would not be subject to sales tax. So that same cabinet, if I broke the door on it and I brought it to you and you repaired that door for me and there were some tangible items involved or whatever, your repair labor would be separately stated and your repair labor, as long as it was separately stated from any tangible items you used to fix the door, would not be subject to that. So let me ask you this. This, is, this strikes on so many of my different clients. I have a lot of clients in construction, okay. right? I have one client that does general construction, he does landscaping and he does household repair. So for his general construction, sounds like he might be subject to fabrication labor, but his repair business, where so he's repairing bathrooms, repairing homes, he may not be subject to that type of uh, labor tax. Well, a contractor in the state of Nevada is mm -hmm. considered the consumer, so they're the end user. So okay. when I work on real property, if I come to your home and I, you have me you know, fix a hole in the wall mm -hmm. or you have me um, fix a broken cabinet that's part of the real property, mm -hmm. then you as the contractor are considered the consumer or the end user. You would pay the tax on all the materials and supplies that you use to fix that hole or that cabinet door and you would bid a price to me. Right. So it's a little bit or, different. Or more, and, more, and most importantly, I need to remember or determine what that cost is, so I need to build that into that bid, so I'm not losing money right. on every bid so when you went out and bought your materials for, and supplies, right. you'd have to think, well, I had to pay tax on this. Right. And if you brought it in from outside the state because mm -hmm. you had a supplier in California that you liked a lot and he shipped it to you here mm -hmm. in Nevada, then you'd want to make sure that you 
paid Nevada use tax mm -hmm. on those materials. Yep. And then, yeah, you think of all that into your cost. It, it is complicated. And 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 the client I'm thinking about in particular keeps horrible books. And I know he doesn't oh. track that. And he does get a lot of his materials from California. Yeah. And he does all work really throughout the valley. And, so, and then he comes to me at the end of the year and saying, oh, I need to do my practice. <laughs> no, I don't want to touch your taxes because you're not keeping good records on exactly what your what your materials taxes should be versus what your labor taxes should be. But he need, he needs education there. Yeah. They need yeah. learning there, yes. which is why it's so important. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, exactly. yes, if I see, we ask the advisors when we're exactly. in the class, it kind of morphs the same way this is. And sometimes we get ahead of our slides because people start talking about something that I'm like, oh, we have some slides later on. I'm you sorry know, about and, that. no, but it, it, it happens all the time. It's just how it is. Mm -hmm. You wish that you could just be one on one with somebody because there's so much information that people can learn in just a half an hour sitting down with a tax examiner, specifically talking about what their business does. Actually, that's a really good segue uh, into a, uh, a question that we have online. Uh, and it's from uh, Maritza Trujillo. And it says, uh, I would like to uh, set up a meeting with the Nevada Taxation in, uh, Agency. Can we make an appointment? Uh, she lives about an hour and a half away. Uh, if she drives in, could she possibly sit down with someone to talk about you know, uh, more in depth about uh, the agency and, and her business. Okay, um, we do not specifically set up appointments. However, we would want to accommodate somebody who drives an hour and a half. I wouldn't want you to come on a day that we would be so busy that somebody wouldn't be able to help you right away. We're typically really busy on Mondays and obviously the end of the month, end of the quarter, we are really, really busy. Fridays are really good days in our office. Mornings are always better. Um, and um, be happy, any, you know, we'd be happy to meet with them. It really just depends on the flow, the month. We're very busy at the end of the month. So if she was, you know, wanted to come out on Friday, being the middle of the month the way it is, and if she left her home in the morning and showed up, um, absolutely, there would be somebody there to help her, and she probably wouldn't have to wait very long. So I think that it's just, um, yeah, we don't set up appointments, although I would love to say we always have tax examiners available. Currently, we have seven tax examiners in our Las Vegas office, and, um, and we will be there to help her. Okay. So um, just stay away from the end of the month. That's the thing. That's good to know. Yes. Definitely. Yes. And um, hey, thank you. Thank you for your question. And if you know, again, if anyone has any comments or questions, please uh, type them in, and we'll definitely will address them. All right, so to talk a little bit about freight, delivery charges, things like that, it's a confusing issue, and a lot of people um, don't charge tax when they need to and possibly are charging tax when they shouldn't be. So delivery, if it is part of the sale of a tangible item, so let's just say that I, um, I um, bought a, an item from um, an out-of-state shipper, he shipped it to me at my home, and he charged me a separately stated shipping charge. If the shipping charge is strictly, or that delivery charge strictly represents the postage, the amount of postage, or the amount that it costs to move that item, and it was separately stated from the sale of the item, then the delivery would not be subject to sales tax. Okay. But if the delivery is shipping and handling, which we all like to say, shipping and handling, and it's lumped together, even if it's separately stated, it's going to be subject to tax because handling, any handling, is gonna be subject to tax. So if I have a special item, and I created a special item for you, I created something, and now I'm going to deliver it to you, and I have to create a special crate to fit it in, mm, that, that is going to be subject to tax, that type mm. of shipping. So sometimes there are circumstances that um, if you're um, if you're if you're confused as to whether you're shipping, um, it, it can be considered some handling, and you want to know whether or not you should be charging about a sales tax. You should definitely touch base with the department. You can also get onto our website and look at the technical bulletin on delivery. There has some good examples in there. That's on our website under publications and then under technical bulletins. Okay, mm -hmm. so shipping if it represents the cost to move an item and it is separately stated as delivery shipping, it is not subject to tax. If it includes any type of handling, then it would be, okay, even if it's separately stated.
there's quite a few slides on bundled transactions here. What a bundled transaction is, is um, if I go to get married, I'm gonna go down onto the strip and I'm gonna get married at one of the wedding chapels and um, I'm going there to get married, but now I'm gonna, as part of my package, there's flowers and maybe some other things involved. And um, because the flowers are probably insubstantial in value to the relation to the cost of the wedding itself and what it's costing me to get married, and they're bundled together, the person who's selling the wedding to me would pay the tax on the price of maybe the flowers. If there was a big mirror or a small bouquet, as long as it was insubstantial in value, and if they're bundled together, the retailer of the wedding is the end user and would pay the tax himself, okay? Oh, okay. If they're bundled together. If they decide to separately bake the charge for the flowers from the wedding ceremony, then the flowers are a sale of a tangible item. Okay, but when you bundle items together, then you have to look at what's involved. A good example, another one is a basket, a basket that might have some cookies in it, might have some wine glasses, a bottle of wine. Well, wine is subject to sales tax regardless, okay? Um, glasses are tangible items, they're subject to sales tax. Cookies sold on their own, a box of cookies at a grocery store would not be, but we put them all in the basket, right? And mm -hmm. we put one price on it. Right, because we have tangible items that are subject to sales tax, mm -hmm. and some yeah, and some items that aren't. Mm -hmm. But we've bundled it together for one price, so the whole thing comes taxable unless we break it out. That is really interesting. So, yeah, and and it's it's it's, it's the details, which is why you yes. know we're having these types of uh, educational seminars. This is excellent. Well, and sometimes too with classes with bundled transaction, if I was going to go to a class and there were books involved and you were charging a tuition, but there was possibly some books involved and you didn't break out the books from the price of the class and you bundled it together, it goes down to the price of the books. What's the value of the books in relation to the price of the class? Oh. Are the books insubstantial? They less than 10% compared to the value of the teaching? Interesting. Or are they significant? Probably significant. Yeah, it definitely. Could be. So then it comes down to sense of some judgment, and it helps to know that but there are regulations, that there are statutes and regulations there that talk about these things, so you can think about it, and then if you're not sure on your own, then you can come in and talk to a department employee and make sure that you understand it. Definitely. Thank you. Okay. So leases. A lease is defined as a sale in the law. So if you're going to rent or lease a tangible item, you're going to have to have a sales tax permit. And you are going to be required at that point to determine whether or not you're going to pay the tax up front on the item. So let's just say a car. I'm going to lease cars. I'm in the business of leasing cars. Yes. I have an option um, in the law that I can pay the tax up front on the car when I purchase it. And then there's no further sales tax when I rent or lease that car until I sell it at the end of its life when I decide it's Pretty worn out and I'm going to sell that rental car then it becomes tangible and it's subject to sales tax. Um, if I also I can present a resale certificate when I buy the car and then every time I rent or lease the car I have to collect Nevada sales tax on the rental income. Oh, so I have two different options definitely. but I have to make that determination within the first month of being in business by the time the first tax return is due. <laughs> okay. Otherwise the state decides that you have to collect it on the rental income. Okay, that's good to know, especially if you are uh, leasing uh, vehicles um, for your business. All right, so can I ask you what type of business you're in? Oh, I'm in small business administration. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Yes, yeah, so we we have a uh, yeah we have a, we have a special guest, and definitely um, uh, after the presentation, we will definitely have T uh, Christina Stace of the Small Business Administration. Um, talk to you about the services uh, that the SBA provides. And uh, Tina, anytime you want to jump in on the conversation, oh, we'd be yeah. more than happy to. Yes, sure. Okay, so if you over collect sales tax, if you collect and you shouldn't have, you do either have to refund it to your customer or you have to remit it to the department. So obviously, if you over collect it on one invoice, you can probably determine who your customer was and you can refund it to your customer. But if you're in a retail establishment, maybe a restaurant, and you've been over collecting on something that maybe not a restaurant, a restaurant, pretty much everything is taxable. But let's just say um, 
you need to get a type of business or maybe something would be maybe a, like a 7-Eleven, a grocery store, and you've over collected, you wouldn't be able to determine who your customers were to refund the sales oh, tax and okay. you'd have to remit it to the department and just correct it on a going forward basis. Oh, okay. Okay. That's, that's good to know. So you talked a little bit, a little bit about this um, a few minutes ago about how you can um, include sales tax in the price. You cannot advertise that you will pay the sales tax for your customers. You see that a lot of advertisements. Um, people like to put, like a lot of furniture stores like to advertise certain ways. Sometimes around holidays, car yes, dealerships and things. I noticed that. You're not allowed to advertise that you'll pay the tax for your customers. You can say that sales tax is included in the price. You just want to make sure that you have something posted at your place of business stating that's the case. Um, and um, if you don't have a sign posted stating that sales tax is included in the price, then the whole price that you've charged is subject to sales tax. And in that case, then you might be taxing yourself out of your pocket. So you really want to make sure that you have that sign posted stating that sales tax is included in the price or you're putting it on all of your invoices. Yeah, okay. definitely. It's, uh, it's all about being thorough and paying attention to detail. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there are some exemptions, obviously. Um, Agencies, the government agencies are exempt from sales tax or statutorily exempt, the city, the county, the federal government. Um, if you are in the business of selling tangible items and you ship something outside the state of Nevada, you would um, not charge Nevada sales tax on that sale because it didn't change hands. Title possession didn't take place in Nevada. Um, so also sales for resale. If you sell to another um, business that's going to resell the item, you would collect their Nevada resale certificate and you would not collect Nevada sales tax on that sale. Um, services, so if you're just in the business of providing service and you don't sell anything tangible, that's exempt from sales tax, okay? Um, and installation labor and repair labor are exempt from sales tax. Um, they are not part of gross receipts. They do have to be separately stated on an invoice though. So like a car repairing a vehicle, repair labor and the parts need to be separately stated and then only the parts are subject to Nevada sales tax. Oh, okay. That's good to know. So the next time I go to my mechanic, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll know why that is yes. on the invoice. But if he okay. lumps it all together, then he needs to charge you tax on the whole ticket. Oh, okay. If there are parts involved. Okay. okay. All right. So if you are selling to an exempt organization, there are certain documents that you need to make sure that you're keeping. So if you're shipping documents, you know, if you're shipping an item outside the state of Nevada, you need to make sure that you're keeping the shipping records. If you're selling to an organization that's going to resell the item, another business, you need to make sure you have their resale certificate on file in case you're audited. If you sell to um, an, an organization that's exempt, like a, a religious, charitable, or educational organization, they should have a letter of exemption issued by our department. There's a lot of mis um, misconception, people feel that because maybe an organization is 501c that they're automatically exempt from sales tax and that is not the case. Oh. They do have to apply for that status with the state of Nevada okay. so they would have a letter mm -hmm. that is issued by our department and it has an expiration date on it. So um, that is a real common thing that happens is people automatically assume that if you're 501c you're exempt from sales tax. So yeah, you need to make sure that if you sell to um, any of those organizations that you're keeping a copy of the letter to protect yourself in case you're audited. If you sell to um, any of the government agencies, city, county, um, federal, you want to make sure that you're keeping, um, that they pay with a check from that organization, that they have a purchase order. You have to support that you've sold to that government agency and that you, that's why you did not charge Nevada sales tax. Okay, so mm -hmm. state well, agency. My purchase didn't need to be refunded. They wanted to be the correct one. They have a purchase card. Right, and that probably, so if I was the federal government, I think that some of them probably have um, visas. And right, I have a visa card, mm -hmm. and I have all kinds, and I have my tax exempt, yep. exempt number. Perfect. However, I do run into problems sometimes when I do order something, and they want something. I don't have anything. I just have a tax exempt number. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I have to go another route because they don't understand that, you know, that we're exempt. So you're saying that all they need to keep is um, 
There should be records there to show that. If, if, you, if you are coming in as a government, um, an employee of the government for a government agency, um, U.S. government or state agency, mm -hmm. city or the county, um, they would need to have possibly purchase orders. A lot mm -hmm. of times that's how they, they have the ability to buy something is with a purchase order. They maybe have a check from that agency, um, a credit card like you're stating as well. They need, I think the more, the more you keep to support who you sold right. to and why you didn't charge me that sales tax is the right thing to do. If you ship something outside the state as a as a Nevada business owner or retailer, you want to make sure that you're keeping the shipping records to support again. I didn't charge sales tax because the item didn't change hands in Nevada. I shipped it outside the state of Nevada. Um, another thing to remember is, is that other states are not exempt from sales tax in Nevada. Just the state of Nevada, cities, counties of Nevada, and the federal government statutorily exempt. Okay? So Nevada National Guardsmen can be exempt from sales tax as well if they're on active. They can get a letter of exemption issued by the Department of Taxation. Um, so um, some businesses may see those as well, people coming in with those letters. Um, they, they usually have the guardsmen listed and the family members that live in the same home as them are also exempt from sales tax. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's not very common. No. Um, so this is just a sample of our resale certificate. You can access them, um, our website, we have them. You can use um, ours or you can make up your own as long as it um, has all the information that is required per the regulation. So this is a sales and use tax return. And this is what you would file when you're registered for sales tax. You would file this either um, monthly or quarterly. Um, some businesses are also annual, but that's very rare. So um, when you um, are in business and you are a retailer, you are required to file a sales tax return regardless of whether you make any taxable sales. So could you please repeat that, what yeah. you just said, <laughs> yeah. please? Yeah, and that's with any of the taxes that our department oversees is you are required to file a return regardless of whether you owe us anything or you have made any sales. It's really common that people get a notice, all of a sudden they get a del delinquency notice, they've got four or five months worth of returns that they haven't filed. They may be a little irritated or whatever because they got it because they maybe they haven't done any business or whatever, but they still need to file their return. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So that's, you know, and we don't mail returns. We haven't for, it's been a few years now. So that is hard for some people, but you can access the, our website. You can download the returns there. You can actually um, go on to our online system and register to file um, and pay online as well. Some people like to do that. Okay. Okay. Very efficient. All right. So um, like we said, you can either be registered for monthly, quarterly, or annual um, filing. Annual for sales tax, you have to have um, you have to have a year's worth of filing uh, filing on the books, monthly filing already. You basically have to have um, less than fifteen hundred dollars in sales over the last year before you can qualify for annual filing. So that's very few people. So this is what's really important is use tax. This is the big thing that affects everybody. Is is that use tax is, is basically mirror of sales tax, and every business that is in business is subject to use tax on the items that they use in their business. This is very important. Talked about this a few minutes or a little bit ago. Um, so if you are in business and you are purchasing and using goods in your business to provide your services, they are your tools, your office supplies, your vehicles, just everything inside of your place of business. If it is not something that you are reselling, then it is taxable to you. And you are required to pay Nevada sales or use tax on those items. Okay. Very important. Very to important to know. So when you come in and register with the department, if you are a retailer or a wholesaler, if you're selling tangible items, you are going to register for what's called a sales and use tax account. If you are not selling anything tangible, then we're going to register you for a consumer use permit. It doesn't cost you anything, but it's that reminder that, hey, have you bought anything this month or this quarter that you didn't pay Nevada sales tax on? Something that's really important to know about use tax is, is I could go, let's just say, because we'll talk about the states that are closest to us. If I am in business and I go to Utah and I find a really good deal on a computer there, something I'm gonna use in my business and I'm at a retailer in, in, in the state of Utah and I, it changes hands with me, I take possession of it in Utah and I take it back to Nevada and I'm gonna use it in Nevada. Well, while I was in Utah, I paid Utah sales tax 
I was required to pay Utah sales tax because I took possession of it there, okay? Now I brought it here. In most cases, Utah, Utah sales tax rate is less than ours. You have to make up the difference to the state of Nevada. Oh, wow. okay. So that's something that, that a lot, and the reason for that is just to keep the playing field even sure. for our businesses here in Nevada. I mean, if we could all shop online and not pay sales tax or who would shop here? Who would be in business sure. here? Uh -huh. Okay, so that's, but then if I go that's to California. Businesses or is that for everybody? Well, the laws apply to everybody, but we audit businesses. So if you go to California, let's do the flip side, where we've talked about earlier that California's rate is higher than ours in most cases. So same scenario, go to California, I pick up that computer, I take possession of it there, I pay California sales tax rate, okay, and now I bring it here. We're not gonna reimburse you for the difference. You bought it there, you mm. owed sales tax okay. to the state of California, you took possession of it there. Okay, even though but the rate is higher. we would recognize it there. Yeah, okay. we would recognize that you paid it. Okay. As long as you- How do you enforce that as consumers? I mean, I, who would think of that? You mean like individuals yeah. or people in business? Individuals. Well, the laws apply to all of us. Right, I understand that, but I mean, I did not know that. Yeah, a lot of people do not know that. Yeah. I mean, so do you buy something and you buy it? So well, and you we have pay the sales. Yes, we have faith yeah. in, in the you businesses that we're shopping. Nothing you can enforce it. It's really It'll common now. It's really common now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we, when you come in and you register your business with us, it's one of the things we really talk to people about is do you, do you buy everything here locally or do you shop online? Do you shop through catalogs? Do you shop in ways that maybe you're shopping with a retailer who has no physical presence or nexus with Nevada and is not required to register here? If that's the case, that's fine, but make sure you're paying close attention to your invoices. And if you're not charged sales tax, or if you are charged sales tax and you think, well, you know, this doesn't look like Clark County's rate. This doesn't equal. You might want to make contact with that retailer out of state and ask, you know, did you charge me, um, you know, let's just say Utah sales tax rate? Because I wasn't in Utah. It got shipped to me here in Nevada. Mm. And and because you don't want to pay it at that case, right. in that in that instance, because it's not legitimate at that point. You didn't owe it to Utah. That item came into Nevada. That's right. So it's a lot to think about, you know, and but it, it affects Every Absolutely. business, not yeah, just absolutely. retailers. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, just so I, I have the, I am I'm clear on making this distinction. If I go to Utah, buy a computer, I have to um, pay Utah sales tax, and then in addition to that, I pay the difference for Nevada tax for when Clark I bring County it here. or whatever Clark County. County you live in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I am in Clark County in Nevada, and I order something online from if, if I order this computer online from someone in Utah, then what is the tax responsibility? So now that item is coming in from Utah, right? right? He's shipping or she is shipping it to you here in Nevada. Right. So now as a, I'm going to use it, I'm going to consume it. I'm not reselling it. It's mine to use in my business. So now I have to pay Clark County, if I'm in Clark County, the sales tax rate on the price of the tangible item. Okay. So that's what I would list if I was a if I was registered for sales and use tax, I would list that in the column amount subject to use tax on my return. If I was only registered for use tax, it would be in the amount subject to use tax. And I would have to pay it when my monthly or quarterly return was due. This is really good yeah. to know. It's yeah, and information. Yeah, yes. there's information. The um, the frequently asked questions on our website about use tax is written in a way that we all can understand it. We, and there's also a technical bulletin on our website okay. under publications. Again, under technical bulletins, there's one on um, you know subject to use tax, amount subject to use tax. It's just it affects so many people, and most people when you talk about it have that look on their face like, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yes. I have no idea. I never think yeah. about that. Yeah. Right. So even if you know I'm in business, if I'm a dentist right. yeah. and I have magazines in the you know in the lobby, those magazines are things I'm using and consuming, and those things are for my customers, and they're subject to tax. So, um, uh, actually, Laura, we have a question uh, from our viewer online uh, from Parker in uh, North Las Vegas, and. This person's question is, it's quite interesting um, pertaining to the subject we're talking about. Please address use tax for items that may be used in business, but
but have a zero purchase cost, such as a gift or something required at no cost, in parentheses, not a trade out for this purpose. So there was no consideration. So there was no consideration. So there was no, cons right. So, so as long as there's no consideration, if I was given something, then I would just have to have records to indicate that if I was purely there was no consideration. But if there's some sort of trade work, you know, then there's consideration. So as long as there's no consideration, or if you've had items, you start business and you've had items at your, you know, at your home and there's prior substantial use on those items, right. you know, that's, there's, that's, that's going to be fine as well. As long as you've had those items, these are my things, you know, that's not an issue. So if you, if somebody gives you something, there is no um, gift laws in Nevada, but if you can prove that there was no consideration, yeah, I think that you, you, it depends on paperwork, what you got. Okay. You know? and, yeah. and, and just for clarification uh, for our listeners, could you define what do you mean by there is no consideration, just in layman's terms? Well, because a trade is consideration. If okay. I'm doing something for you, I, you didn't... Um, you didn't um, give me money, right. but I did something for you. Okay. I maybe maybe I'm a um, I don't know. I have the ability to you know fix your plumbing or do okay. something for you. Sure. And so you gave me an item. There's consideration there. There's an exchange. Okay. Okay. Very good. So we yes. don't have gift laws in mm -hmm. Nevada. So it would really depend upon the circumstances. Okay. okay. Th this is this is good to know. And thank you uh, for your comments. Uh, Parker in North Las Vegas. Yeah, and if those if those types of questions, if they want to come in and talk, you know, they can come into the Las Vegas office if they have specifics that they'd like to sit down and talk with me about. That's not a problem. Just come in and ask for me. And it's a free, accessible community resources with the Department of Taxation. Laura, what is your website? Our website is um, <laughs> tax.nv.gov. Putting a lot of pressure there. Tax.nv.gov. Okay, very good. I gave you my email address. <laughs> <laughs> I give that out a lot more. Okay, so let's see. So this is just a sample of our use tax return, similar to the sales and use tax return, but only has a column for amount subject to use tax. You'll notice on both the returns that all the different counties in the state of Nevada are listed there and all the different tax rates. So if you have something that you either, you know, you used in Clark County and maybe there's something else that you used in Nye County because you have different locations, you have to list them on the applicable ones. The sales tax rates are different. So we spent a couple minutes talking about computers um, and software. So the thing to remember with computers is, is that tangible items are taxable. Okay, so if something is sold to you, some software, and there's nothing tangible involved with the sale of that, you got it by what the, some of the terms like load and leave, or it's sent to you electronically, and there's no tangible items involved, then there is no sales tax. Tangible items are subject to sales tax. Okay, that's the key. That's the key. So if you have um, pre written computer software, like something I can go buy at, you know, Office Max or something pre-written computer software and it is tangible, it is going to be subject to sales tax. Okay. Okay. Pre-written computer software, if it's sold to me um, electronically, again, no tangible items involved, there's nothing to charge me that a sales tax on. Custom computer software, you design my computer software for me for my computer, it's custom, completely custom. Even if there's something tangible involved, that original rendering is considered a service and it is not subject to sales tax. Oh, that's okay. interesting. Okay. So, but multiple copies of it would be. Okay, so that okay. original rendering is considered the service of creating it okay. and it is not going to be subject to sales tax. Okay. All right? That's good to so know. So anything that has to do with, with computers you want to think about is there something tangible here? Did I get something tangible in my hands? Sometimes you may not get the software um, as a tangible item, but maybe there was books involved. So then did they separately state or is it a bundled transaction? Then we go back to the bundled transaction right. and the value. And if they don't break out the value of the tangible items versus the intangible items, what's the value? So that was a lot to think about. <laughs> so one, one quick question on that. Let's say that I purchase access to a software system, for example, like um, here, um, Las Vegas Urban League is a nonprofit, and so if we 
we are fund, funded by grants, federal mm -hmm. grants, um, private sector grants. And so I pay for a service that allows me to see these different grant opportunities. I buy two licenses. Is that taxable or non-taxable? Because no, nothing, nothing's changing hands, but I now have access to a plethora of information. But there's nothing tangible. Okay. That's the thing with sales tax is it's charged on tangible okay. items. Fair okay. So everything, like we said earlier, you want to assume that everything's taxable, then that there's a specific exemption in the law. Okay. Well, um, speaking of nonprofits, let's say that a nonprofit received a ten thousand dollar donation. So that so the nonprofit is responsible for the taxes involved in that? Possibly income tax, but again, that's but not my arena. Are they exempt? That that's not there's nothing Wait, sold. That's that's something that's not sales tax. That's more along the lines of um, it sounds like an income tax question. Absolutely. It's gotta be, a gift. It's gotta be considered but, a gift. In, in in terms of nonprofit, it has to be yeah. called a gift because technically we're not supposed to have anything. Yeah. The day. So yeah. it's only something to pay on it. Mm -hmm. Although there really is income in something called retained earnings that we we just take and keep and roll over to the next year. But um, that's a very good question because yeah. I, no. I have the same thing with you. You know, here at the Early, we use Walmart down the street. And we have to take this little card that says, you know, I said we have to give it to the, the cashier beforehand because if we don't, they have to re yeah. repurchase and retally yeah. and yeah. Yeah, rescan everything. <laughs> it's just a huge waste of time. But otherwise, otherwise you know, I have to pay tax on it. If I buy it myself with my with my own credit card, I'm paying yeah, tax on yeah, all that right. information, right? right. Yeah. That, you know, so products. it sounds like that donation wouldn't be subject to sales tax, but then it sounds like more of an income tax question. And and again, I really like the way that you're that that you're making sure that I stay in the lane <laughs> of, <laughs> of 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 sales tax. Yes. Yeah. And not exactly. income tax. Exactly. That's a whole nother ball game, whole nother topic. So, yes. so thank you for that. Yeah, that's um, that's another session. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we need to have that session because I'm not sure that many of our small businesses understand the difference. Yeah, and and uh, and we can definitely collaborate. Uh, okay. well, you know, to, to 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 do that without definitely. Question. All right. So the next tax that we are going to discuss is modified business tax. So. In the state of Nevada, um, we have what's called modified business tax. It is a tax on the wages that the employer pays to employment security. So when an employer registers with unemployment, with employment security department, or ESD, you hear it called, um, they register to pay unemployment taxes on their employees. Um, a feed comes through to our department, and it sets up a modified business tax account for that taxpayer. Ah, oh, okay. And, um, the taxpayer can either be um, a general business or they can be considered a financial institution depending upon um, what they do. Um, so when I am in the business and I have employees, then I'm required to pay modified business tax on the wages I report to unemployment. So the wages you report to our department quarterly, you mm -hmm. have to match the wages that you report to employment security department. Oh, okay, checks and balances, and okay. The first $50,000 a quarter is exempt from modified business tax, but everything over and above that is subject to the modified business tax, okay? okay. So there are some um, businesses that are exempt from modified business tax, an Indian tribe, um, a nonprofit organization, a 501c, um, or political subdivisions. They're exempt from modified business tax. So um, you can deduct from modified business tax the wages that you pay, or I'm sorry, the health care that you pay if you provide health care to your employees and okay. you pay their health care or you pay a portion of their health care. You're allowed to deduct that off of the, um, of the wages that you owe the tax upon. Okay. So um, you cannot deduct, um, if, you, um, if you reimburse a tax, uh, your purchasing, turn this out right. You are allowed to only deduct from their health care or the amount of their health care that you pay yourself. Oh, okay. okay. So only what you, the employer pays. Hmm. Is that right? Um, so employer paid insurance deductions include self-insured employers, all amounts paid for claims, premiums, stop loss, if the program is qualified employer welfare benefit plan, premiums for policy of health insurance for employees, or payments to a Taft-Hartley Trust. Okay. 
um, employer paid insurance is you cannot deduct amount paid by the employee. So if you and your, if you pay part of it, but your employee pays part of their health care, you are not allowed to deduct that. Um, you cannot um, deduct your work, workers' compensation insurance that you pay on behalf of your employees. Okay. Any life insurance that you pay on behalf of your employees or any disability insurance. So the rate, um, as of our last legislative session in 2015, was raised to 1.475, and the deductible amount was lowered. It used to be at 85,000. It is now at 50,000. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, financial institutions and um, for net proceeds of mining, they're at 2%, and they have no deductions. There, I mean, I should say there's no threshold 